What's up y'all? It's Tuesday and Tuesday is tricking tutorial day. Why tricking? Well, have you ever seen a gymnast with a bad body? Probably not. So why do they, why does that work? So basically they have all these static maneuvers and these very slow, you know, calisthenic type of, uh, type of maneuvers that helps build that, the actual muscle size and definition. But what about the weight loss? How does that play into that? Well, same thing with an acrobat, acrobat, gymnast, whatever. These people do also a lot of flips and these acrobatic maneuvers, they take a lot of energy. If you've ever tried to just go out and do a hundred cartwheels in a row, it kind of sucks. It, uh, it's a pretty good workout. So anyways, if you can't do that, no big deal. If you can't go out in your backyard and do a hundred backflips, no big deal. Uh, but you can learn these three basic moves. And the awesome thing about that is not only can you just continuously use these three moves together in a tricking line, but you can actually use these three to learn basically every tricking trick there is out there. Uh, I would highly recommend if you're into all that Kojo's Trick Lab. He really just uses one. He teaches almost everything just from uh, aerial. And I'm going to be showing you a butterfly kick, which he shows how to turn into an aerial. So anyways, Without any more introduction, let's just get started. So, um, a pretty awesome little tricking line intro would begin with just like basic macaco maybe. Reason why is that uh, this will start to get you over backflip fear to where you can start doing back handsprings, backflips, cheat gainers, flash kicks, all kinds of cool backflippy kind of things. Start with the macaco and this is so, so easy. So for the macaco, I mean, you just get your hand and then stick it behind you, but not straight down like that. You're gonna turn it like that. And then you're just gonna walk around your hand. That's it, you just walk around. And then whenever you're kind of used to that, and that's pretty easy, because anybody can do that, trust me, you can do that. Start to kind of hop as you walk around. And the idea here is just to get a little, get a little bit more jumpy with it, get a little bit more air, It'll, uh, it'll help a lot, trust me. So anyways, um, once you have done that enough times, you'll eventually notice that you only really need to kick off of one leg, or you can kick from two, but you don't really need to do the hops anymore. You're just jumping straight back into the position that you began from, but behind you. Now you're actually doing a pretty decent macaco, but it may be going sideways, which so is okay then, for now. As far as the butterfly kick goes, this can be taught or can be learned pretty easily too because all you really need to do is just like uh, look to your, well if you're going to be butterfly kicking to your left then look to your left and kind of like behind you on the ground and then dip down in a U shape so you're not going straight in like this like an angle. You're going to drop your body down, make your body go across and then when you raise your body up you're spinning on, from the way I'm doing it, my left leg and I'm kicking my right leg up while still looking behind me. This generates the lift for the, for the flying through the air part of it. If you're not comfortable flying through the air yet, which you probably won't be if you've never done this trick before, don't fly through the air. Don't even do the, the kick part of it. Just walk it out like, like you started with the macaco. Just uh, dip down and your U dip, come across and then when you get to the part where you raise your leg, kick your leg up, like we learned yesterday for those uh, stretches, those back lift stretches, uh, or back kick stretches or whatever, do that exact same thing, but still stay planted on your left foot, then bring your right foot down, and then your left foot up. You do the exact same thing, and the whole time, spin. So whenever you bring, at first, your right foot up, you're gonna spin a little bit on your left foot, and then whenever you drop your right leg down and bring your left foot up, spin a little bit again so that you end up in the same position that you started from, but a little bit over there uh, or a little bit to your left if you're butterfly kicking to your left. Obviously, if you're going to go to your right, do all the same crap I just said, but do it in the opposite direction. So once you get to that point, You'll probably notice that you're not really flying through the air and it's not really looking or feeling like a butterfly kick. That's cool. You're most of the way there. All you really need to do now is just uh, get a little bit more hoppy with it. Just uh, sort of hop from one foot to the other. 
and try to feel a little bit of lift in between those hops. And then eventually, your eventual goal is for your body to dip down, your right leg to go up, and while your right leg is up, your left leg comes up and meets. Then you sort of rotate in the air, kind of flying and rotating, and then your right leg is gonna drop down to land on, and then your left leg is gonna come down. It kind of makes that twisting kind of motion. So once you get to that point, you've pretty much mastered the butterfly kick. Super easy thing to do. Um, so from there, there's a lot of different variations you can learn for the butterfly kick, but the first thing I would do is just come up with your own style for that kick because you can drive your foot straight up and this is gonna launch you higher in the air and you're gonna travel less, which is usually better for tricking is to have these high floaty kind of tricks. I personally do the exact opposite. I do it more like uh, Ronnie Chavez. He was the first person that I learned it from. And so I like to extend my legs all the way out and kind of float through the air. And I actually intentionally travel because I use butterfly kicks as precisions to jump from one ledge to another. So the traveling is part of the trick for me. But anyways, go out, develop your own style. And then after you learn that, maybe learn some of the other variations. But uh, another trick or the next trick would be the tornado kick. Um, this one I saved for last because it has a little bit more steps to it. Literally, most of what this does is going to involve stepping. So, the first thing you do is deciding which, uh, which foot you're going to butterfly or going to tornado kick off of is going to be important, obviously, but uh, you're going to do a half rotation. So just sort of like spin on one of your legs, drop the other leg down, and then point the toes the wrong way. That's kind of a weird way to think about it, but uh, that's pretty much what you're doing is like, this is how you would normally stand, right? So let's say you're standing kind of sideways like this. Well, then the next thing that you do is this is gonna rotate around and then face back in so that this can continue rotating around your other foot, basically. And then when that other foot comes around to rotate, you bring your knee up. So that's kind of, that's called a chamber. And in this case, it is to sort of fake out like you're gonna do a kick with that leg, but you're not actually gonna do a kick with that leg. You're gonna use that knee drive to get your height or your distance. Again, depending on what you're going for here. And then. After you've chambered while still twisting and lifting up, then you're gonna bring your other leg, chamber your other leg, kick, and land on it. So at first, that's like a lot of crap to remember. So same thing, twist around, spin your foot the other way, bring your knee up, and then honestly just drop your chambered knee down and stand on it, chamber your other knee, and do essentially a roundhouse kick. So nothing is actually happening in the air. You're not flying around in the air at all. After you've done that, then you're gonna be a little bit more comfortable with the individual steps. And so then just try to uh, hop off of the leg that is not chambered, then chamber your knee in the air on that leg, and just do that, then try to land on it. So that you're basically jumping off the same leg that you will eventually be kicking with. That's called hyper. So. When you're first learning that, it's kind of weird to some people. Um, I got it pretty pretty easily. The tornado kick was pretty easy for me, but for some people, it's super weird. So whatever. Whenever your other, when your hyper leg starts to hyper, <laughs> like you're gonna jump off of it, just chamber that knee and don't even throw a kick. Just try to land back on that leg. So you're jumping from one leg, you're kicking with that same leg, and you're landing on that same leg. Uh, that'll set you up for a good 540 kick, jackknife, and a bunch of other cool stuff like that, but learning it that way. But then eventually you'll get comfortable with it to where you'll just kind of fly through the air, hop off that leg, kick with that leg, land on that leg, and you'll do it without even really thinking about it. Because the twist from your upper body drives you so easily that you kind of, it's a pretty easy maneuver. It's not, it's not as difficult as it looks.